Hey everyone, welcome back to this video series on the Cucumber Automation Framework. Today, I'm going to talk about the page object model. Now, it's a very popular, uh, you can say framework, or it is also called a design pattern, which is mostly used in the test automation frameworks, right? Uh, and if you have worked on Selenium, uh, page object model is widely used across, right? Along with the page factory, which is present in Selenium. So this is a design model, right? Uh, where your code is kind of divided or you kind of create an object repository, right? While working in Selenium or Cucumber projects, you divide your application into different page classes, right? So what are these page classes? These are basically simple Java classes, which contain uh, all your web elements, how do you, um, along with their identifiers, and then they also contain all the methods which are required to interact with those web elements, right? And all these are grouped under a single page. Now, if I talk about a ex simple example, right? Any application, uh, there is a login page and there is a home page, okay? So you can create two page classes. In this case, one is the login page class, Another is the home page class, right? And then you can uh, take all the elements, web elements, which are present in login page and put it inside the login page class. Similarly, for home page, you will put all the web elements and the methods to interact with those web elements, like clicking an object or entering some text into text box, right? So whatever interactions you are doing with those web elements, you can create different methods and keep it inside this page class. So similarly, you can divide your application into different page classes and each page class could be a representation of a single page in your application or a major functionality, right? So you can divide it uh, according to how your application looks like. So this is all about the page object model. Now let's uh, have a look in real time how you can implement this uh, in a Selenium or a Cucumber based project, right? So we have been working um, on a Cucumber uh, test ng project, right, with Selenium. So we are now going to implement page object model in this particular or in that particular project. So I'm going to show you how you can convert a simple uh, Cucumber Java, uh, Java project into a page object model, page object model design pattern, right? So let's have a look. So let's head back to our uh, demo project, which we have been working on, right? So I'll be looking at this login test dot feature, right? Um, and there is login step definitions, which contains all the step definitions. So we have used before and after hooks here, and then we have written all our code at this same place, right? Now, I'll also tell you the advantages of this page object model, right? Uh, why should we use that? Why should not you write your code directly inside the step definitions? So what are the disadvantages and what are the advantages? We are going to talk about that, uh, or I will show you in real time, right? So what we are going to do is we are go going to take all this code, which is written inside this step definitions, and we are going to put that into uh, a page class, right? So we'll divide it, uh, we'll first create our elements and then we'll create our methods, okay? Okay, so let's go to our source main Java and I've created a package here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create here, right? So let me first create a base class here, right? Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, what this base class will do, okay? Uh, and 
and then we are going to create our login login page class okay now as i said let's look at our step definitions and what are the web elements we are using all right so we are using this uh, username password and submit button these are the three web elements which we are using okay so we need three web elements in this login page class now how do you uh, create those web elements you can create it as a kind of constant right so public static you can also use private here uh, so public static string right and then you can give it a name for your uh, so i will call it text username for the username field and in this you need to give the identifier which you want to use so in our case it is a username right so id we can find it by id username so go back to your login page and here you can simply write username right and then similarly you can do it for other web elements like text password and here it will be password right and then similarly you can do it for um this is a button so submit and again the id is submit right so let's yeah okay so these are basically our web elements or the way we can identify our web elements right so now we will write some methods which will interact with those web elements inside this page how you can interact with this web elements right so in text text um, text box field you will obviously enter something right and in a button you will click on that so what are the two interactions or two operations we are performing entering into a text box and clicking on a button right so those are our methods so let's create our methods so public void and enter user name here what i will do i will pass a string right so string str user name okay so this is my method and then i'm going to uh, i'm going to use a, a selenium driver right here so driver dot so for now i will just um, i'll just create a driver instance here but we will later see how we can get the driver object here okay so public web driver and driver right so we'll import the driver web driver class and now we can do find element by dot id and we will import this class now we can easily use the identifier here right and then what we'll do we will send keys here we will use the string username now as you can see i've designed this method in such a way that it can be reused anywhere right and there is no constant um, values being used here we are using the value from a parameter which is being accepted by this method so it can be uh, reused anywhere anytime right so that's the purpose of reusable methods and then public void enter password and here again string str password okay and again here the same way you can first find element by dot id and you will use password here and send keys str password okay 
And our last method is public void click submit. And uh, there will be no parameter for this driver dot find element by dot ID and button dot click, right? And I think we have just another method which is written here, which is to verify the title, right? So we'll write a method for this as well. Now let's copy this line so that we can use it here. And we will do public void, um, public void verify title. Okay and we'll pass the title here and here we will say we will use some assert method here assert dot assert true and driver dot get title okay dot equals here we'll say title it, so this will assert our title for the page. Okay, so we have four methods. We have three web elements. Um, if you want to directly use this me methods, you can directly uh, make it static. Okay. Instead of instantiating this class, you can directly make this method static and directly call them in the step definition file. Okay, so now we can go back to our login step definitions and we can replace some code here, right? So let's see what we can replace here. These two lines, username and password, right? So what we'll do, we will say login page dot enter username. We will pass the username here and then login page dot enter password, we'll pass the password here. And here uh, we will say login page dot click submit, okay? And here we will say login page dot verify title. And we'll pass the string as digital bank, okay? So here comes the first advantage of using the page object model, right? Our code, as you can see, is much cleaner, right? We are just uh, making some calls to some methods from a page class. The second advantage is our internal logic is abstracted from the user who is kind of um, using the feature files and step definitions for execution purpose, right? So all the internal code is in the page class. The step definitions will have only the calls to different methods, right? So complete abstraction of internal logic and our code is much cleaner and optimized, right? So these are two advantages. Now let's see how we can manage um, this setup, right? So for that purpose, I have created this base class. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public static web driver here and driver. Okay, now we are going to put all this setup things in this base class. Okay, so let's create a method here, public void set driver. And we will put our code inside the set driver, right? And we will um, write some more methods here, like public void. So what are the methods? Okay, so we need this also, right? Otherwise it won't work. 
so let's go to the base class and we need this we will want to close the driver so we will do that here driver dot quit okay and so here um, it will set the driver and here it will close the driver okay so two methods i have in base class now let's see here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this code and this as well right so what i can do is in base class i can basically write another method which will navigate to the page okay so let's do that what i'm going to do public void and navigate to home okay and we will put this uh, code here, right? So set driver will set the driver, navigate to home will navigate and close driver will close, okay? Now, here in setup, what we'll do is we will say base class dot, okay, so we need to extend the base class here and we can directly call the methods now. So what are our methods? Let's have public static here. Okay. And so now we can directly call it in our before hook, right? So what our before hook will do? Um, basically set the driver, right? And this will close the driver. And in this, we can write navigate to home, right? And we don't need this now. Uh, we will remove these unused imports, okay? And what we'll do here, we'll extend our base class. Okay, so that will give us the driver. So now, as you can see, we have got lots of reusable methods. So reusability is obviously increased in your framework, right? Your code is much optimized, as I said earlier, is much cleaner and abstraction is also applied, right? So, uh, uh, very good um, OOPS framework, or you can see the concepts of OOPS, right? So the logic is applied in your framework now, right? You have complete abstraction, you have reusability, you are um, inheriting a base class. So inheritance is there, right? So um, you can say most of the concepts are applied in your framework and it's now much simpler and the maintenance also going forward will your efforts will reduce in order to maintain this project compared to the earlier earlier uh, approach where we were writing all the code here right so that's how you create your page classes different page classes based on your project and you give um you reuse, you make reusable methods and also web elements, right? So this web elements now can act as an object repository for you, right? So this is the object repository for login page. So whenever you want to change your um, web elements, you just come here and change it here, right? So that's what uh, I wanted to show you how to apply page object model in your uh, Cucumber or Selenium project, right? So I hope uh, you liked this video uh, and it was useful for you. So keep watching uh, similar videos um, at our YouTube channel, QS Script, uh, where I will be coming up with more um, similar videos.
right so see you in the next video until then uh, goodbye